Well, let me give you a very specific example of the way we were developing workers in our church plant in the uh, Evangelical Free Church of North Munich. So this was a number of years ago when I was uh, helping plant this church. And to give you an idea, the church uh, at the point where I'm sort of describing here had grown to maybe around 100 people on Sunday. And, um, but uh, a key, as I say, was really developing the different people in their ministries so that the church was strong and healthy. And so uh, I'm going to describe several different aspects, specific initiatives to develop workers. And one, perhaps the most important of all, was the ongoing training of cell group leaders during a monthly cell group leader meeting. What this means is we had decentralized most of the caregiving, disciple-making ministries into cell groups. And I would meet once a month with those cell group leaders. Now, what kind of things did we do? Well, we spent time praying for one another. We also talked about who was attending the cell groups. If new people were coming to the church, had they, been, had they found their way into a group where they could be cared for and nurtured and experience church as family? So we made sure that new people were getting connected with small groups. But we had a special time of equipping. Now what we did was we tended to take whatever issues were the concerns in those groups and make those sort of the things we talked about and equipped for. For example, somebody had a cell group and there was, you know, a person in the cell group who was behaving in a way unbecoming of a Christian and their life was really rather not in order. And so the cell group leader was saying, well, how do we deal with that person? Now, sort of in a more traditional church structure, they'd say, well, let's get the pastor to go talk to that person, All right? Well, we said, no, you are the primary caregiver. The cell group leader should figure out a way to deal with the issue. And if that doesn't resolve itself, then maybe the pastors or elders will get involved. But we are pushing ministry into those groups. And so we said, well, what do you do with this situation? And so for a couple of times, a couple of months when we were meeting together, we were talking about this. How do you exhort someone in a Christ-like manner? Uh, how do you identify problems that people are having? Um, how do you deal with these kinds of problems? How do you exercise discipline? And so it was very practical for them. Or maybe uh, we're going along and, and the groups are saying, you know, our Bible discussion is very flat. People are just not getting deep into the Word of God. They're not applying it very well. It's sort of routine. And so that became a topic. We say, okay, well, let's talk about how we do Bible study in the groups. Let's talk about how to apply the scriptures to our lives. Let's talk about how to get people to open up and talk about really what's going on spiritually. And so that would become another topic. And so we made these very, very practical. And because of that, people were motivated to keep coming back. Um, I've talked to some past say, well, we tried cell group leaders training and people just don't want to come, they're busy and so on. And I've always said, you make it so practical so useful that they don't want to miss it. And it worked pretty good for us. So the goal was equipping and multiplying those cell group leaders. So there was always a, or we tried to always have a co-group leader that would attend uh, those meetings. So they're getting prepared to lead a group. Uh, the objectives would be say leading Bible studies, discipleship, counseling, visitation, these kinds of things. Now there was another feature of this sort of training program, and that was the mentoring of two men in the church. And here the goal was really developing that upper level, people moving up towards that upper level. The objective was one, to disciple a newer believer for future leadership. This was a, a newer believer who had really demonstrated faithfulness and really demonstrated uh, the growth in their faith. This was a person I decided to invest extra time in. The other was actually a current church elder. And that elder was becoming a coach for cell group leaders and was taking responsibility. And so as the pastor, I said, here's two men. I cannot spend one-on-one -on -one time with 50 people. I can't do that with 12 people. But I chose two people. I said, I'm going to spend extra time with these people to develop them in their lives and character. So this is the one-on-one -on -one idea. The uh, cell group leader meeting was sort of the the training and ministry teams, because they were the ministry team for cell groups. This was sort of the individual training. Then we had training and workshops 
two to three times a year for special ministry skills. I mentioned a workshop for preaching. I mentioned a workshop for evangelism. Uh, and so we would have these different kinds of workshops for people to get involved in ministry, to learn those basic skills, and then be able to apply them. So the goal was recruitment of new workers, the development of others, the focus on basic ministry skills. The objectives were to plan workshops for lay preaching, preparing Bible studies, personal evangelism, counseling, and so on. And so remember we had the problem of the inverted pyramid. If you have too few workers and too many passive church members and these people get stressed out that are bearing this weight. We said we want to get it like this where we're integrating new people into ministries. And often these workshops were a great way to sort of introduce people to ministries and get them involved, give them skills they need. And then the coaching of a ministry team leader. Now this was a little different than the one-on-one -on -one I was talking before about, but there was a ministry team leader. In this case, we wanted to multiply leaders who can train their team leaders. So this is where multiplication comes in. I'm not the only person doing the training, but those team leaders are now helping their people. And so the objective in this case was to meet with the worship team leader to help him plan worship team meetings. Initially, I was in those worship team meetings all the time, but then eventually I was able to help develop this uh, man so he was able to lead that worship team and they would do planning and they'd do creative ideas and that ministry was then in, in his hands pretty much. I didn't have to do it. Empowering and releasing him to lead that ministry. And then character formation of the church elders. I've said over and over again, the church is no healthier than the health of its top leaders, spiritual health. And so in this case, the goal was to spiritually help develop the elders. And so our specific objective was actually to meet bi-weekly every other week for breakfast, meeting with elders to discuss their personal growth and pray with them. No church business, we just meet together and we might meet together for 45 minutes or an hour. We'd eat breakfast together. People had to go to work. They're looking at their watch, so it, you know we couldn't take too long. But we just spent time to talk about our spiritual lives, to pray for one another. And so we're avoiding the issue of potentially having our top-level leadership get into spiritually dangerous places. And then the cell groups became the primary context for discovering and developing spiritual gifts. As I mentioned before, the average person might say, well, gosh, I could never teach a large group of people. Gee, but in our little cell group, there's only 10 people. I could try leading a discussion there. And so you identify those gifts. Or counseling. I was never really very gifted as a counselor. And, um, but there were a lot of counseling needs in the church. And if they all came to me, they were probably going to be disappointed. I just wasn't that gifted at counseling. But I knew that, it, that my responsibility was to help develop people who had that gift. Now you say, well, wait a minute. If you're not very gifted at it, how are you going to help other people be better at it? Well, here's what we did. We said, well, let's get together the people who are actually doing a lot of counseling. You know, I've discovered in almost every church, other than maybe the pastor or the staff, there's those go-to people where people have, have those needs, they just are gravitating to those, those people in the church that are understanding to sort of have this gift of counseling. So I said, well, let's find those people and let's meet once a month and let's just talk about what's going on. You know, let's read a book together about counseling. Let's send somebody to a seminar somewhere else and have that person report back in our group. Let's have case examples of what to do in certain situations. Let's talk about particular difficult cases. There might be a person in our church that's very depressive and they're constantly calling on the phone and, and how do we deal with people with these kinds of issues? And so, so it became a, a forum really where I wasn't necessarily the expert just telling everybody how to do this, but we just shared our experiences, gained information from other people and so on. And so that was a way. So the small groups, the cell groups were sort of identifying who were these people that had some of these skills and then we'd invite them to this monthly meeting. So cell groups became a place to recruit workers on the basis of their spiritual gifts and then work with those small group leaders 
how to promote them in their groups. So sometimes, for example, what happens all the time is you say, well, you know, we don't have enough Sunday school workers or we don't have enough children's workers. And what often happens, we make some kind of an announcement, right? You know, we need volunteers for this ministry. And of course, everybody's kind of sitting back and go, gee, I hope nobody taps me on the shoulder, right? You know, <laughs> that, that announcement doesn't always bear a lot of fruit, does it? Um, and so what we said is, that, you know, we're not going to put that much uh, weight on the announcement. Let's get our small group leaders and say, okay, in your small groups, do you know anybody who you think might be gifted for children's work? And they're not serving in a bunch of other ministries yet. You know, and so you kind of go through the different small groups. And then you go, hey, here's a person who might be good for this. All right, well, then let's talk to that person. Let's see if we can give that person an opportunity to observe or to, to get some equipping. And so we'd actually recruit the workers instead of just always asking for volunteers. And again, if you're dealing with a very small sort of house church cell type arrangement, you're probably not going to have a lot of these types of uh, trainings and different ministries going on. You're going to be doing much more grass work, uh, roots sort of mentoring and one-on-one, -on -one, you know, that type of an approach. But for more established churches with more structure, uh, we've found these to be helpful approaches. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. And so here's a few points for application uh, to this particular topic. What are the, some of the methods you have used to intentionally develop leaders in your ministry? So whether you're a lay person, whether you're a pastor or an elder, what have you been doing and what has been helpful in developing workers and reproducing workers for your ministry? What are the greatest hindrances to leadership development in your church or church plant? What's holding back? How can you address that? And then how might those hindrances be overcome? What are the possibilities to address those hindrances? And finally, what do you want to do differently as a result of this session? I've given you a lot of ideas, and just very briefly. And maybe you want to go through and say, you know, there were, there were five different ideas that I thought were interesting. What are just maybe one or two ideas you say, that's something I can use in my church and make it practical? What you want to do differently. So those are just some exercise questions you might want to discuss in your leadership team or in your, in your class.